Hey guys, John here with Survival Dispatch, and today I'm joined by Alan Kay, and we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of uh, night vision versus thermal. You know, there's there's many different companies out there making many different products. Everybody starts to talk about pros and cons and which is better, this or that. And Alan and I come from the same rule of thought. The best is both, both of them. One of each. So you know, we listen. Getting into night vision, getting into thermal, we know it's extremely expensive. It's an investment, uh, but it's also something that you know. The buy once, cry once mentality almost, you know, which I don't know why anybody cries anyways, because once you have it, it you just giggle every time you get you over use it. it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the advantages of, of thermal and night vision at nighttime, I mean, it's a it's a force yeah. multiplier, as, as Alan likes to say. Um, the ability to see things that the naked eye can't see mm -hmm. um, is, is a huge advantage. But there are huge differences between the two. And it's, it's hard for a lot of people to understand exactly what the difference is without being able to, to see through them. Right. Uh, you know, first of all, neither of these devices are like a cloaking device. You know, most people think that if they put a PVS-14 on or something that they're invisible. <laughs> right. They can just walk through a field and nobody can see them and right. then everybody realizes, hey, stupid. All know, the other rules still apply. All yeah. the other rules still apply, you know. Um, but we're getting to the point now where units are starting to become smaller and smaller and more affordable as technology advances. You know, Alan has a, has a PVS-14 here. Um, he's got a skull crusher that he keeps in his bag, and he'll, he'll explain that a little bit. But, you know, this is your standard, you know, PVS-14. Um, not, too, not too big, not too bulky, can easily fit in a bag. Um, this is one of the new FLIR Breach thermals that I got, as you can see. It's actually smaller than a, than a PVS-14 and uh, has exceptional clarity to it, can take video, uh, can take uh, regular stills, um, has a three or four X uh, digital zoom on it, has multiple different colors, white hot, black hot, multicolor, a lot of different things. Got this from the awesome guys at TNVC. Um, so this is something that, that I have used lately for hog hunting and stuff. Um, I have the helmet mount adapter for this. I, I never run it on a helmet. I always use this as a spotting scope pretty much. So, you and know what? Did you say they're interchangeable too? Yeah, yeah. So you can take this exact mount off of this one uh, and put it on your skull crusher. So, you know, extremely interchangeable. Um, but, you know, you can keep this in a chest rig. And what I do is, is I run my dual tubes or a PVS-14 and, and then I can just pull this up. I can look through it. Um, it's, it's interchangeable. You can run it over any eye. Uh, so, you know, I'll bring it up, I'll scan. And, um, so, I mean, that's, that's what I utilize, you know, what is your experience with using night vision in different scenarios? I loved it. I mean, there's no single thing that you can obtain that you could go out and purchase that will change your life as much as this, you know, it, it enables you to move at night in situations where otherwise you couldn't, at least not safely, you yeah. step off the cliff or into a hole or whatever. And as far as the tactical world, there's, there's really no single thing that you or a small unit could do to really, really up the ante. Because, I mean, the guy that has this is going to win against the guy that doesn't nine yeah. times out of ten, you know. Yeah, and, and one of the things, you know, a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, which one should I get first if I can only get one? I always try to lean people towards a PVS-14. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The biggest difference is, is, you know, yes, you can mount it on a weapon, things like that. But a PBS-14 will allow you to maneuver a lot better um, in dark situations, mm -hmm. you know, where a thermal, you're still not going to see rocks, sticks, holes, things like that. It's all going to look the same. What you're going to really notice is, is a heat source. Right. So the ground is going to kind of just all look kind of nice, light gray. It, it's, it's difficult to walk. That's why I don't helmet mount my thermals. Um, so a PBS-14, extremely versatile for non-weapon applications right. also. Just straight movement at night um, we hear the term bug out all the time okay so we're, yeah. we're trapped here at work wherever it is let's say it's in the city and I'm trying to get home to the family you know so when am I gonna move if I'm smart at night mm -hmm. so this helps me move at night and the infamous skull crusher uh, or a bump helmet or something to affix it on your head so that your hands can be free to, to do things it, it makes a lot of sense yeah and you know and one thing that that you'll start to notice is nighttime makes people stationary. Right. Period. What you want to do is flip your patterns of life yeah. opposite of everybody else's. And yeah. so most people are starting to chill out around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, yeah. midnight. 
So that's when you're going to be laid up, and then your movement should happen when everybody else is hunkered down because people equal problems. Yeah. So if I can move when everything else is not moving, then I can hopefully avoid all those nasty situations. Yeah, yeah and I mean, when we're not just like trying to come up with dumb scenarios. I mean, you think about it, you go hi hiking or camping, anything like that, as soon as sun starts fading, hey, it's time to build a shelter, it's time to build a fire, it's time to get cooking. Mm -hmm. All those things make you stationary. Mm -hmm. They make you stop, they make people stop. Where night vision allows you the flexibility um, and the advantage to continue moving when others cannot see nearly, nearly as well. Um, you know, the other thing too is, is as far as patrolling security work. Mm -hmm. These are a huge advantage. That's when that guy comes in. Yeah. That's, that's your threat detection, you know, your target acquisition stuff happens with that. Uh, this, you know, with the night vision, yeah, if, if his movement and his camouflage are correct and I can't see him in the daytime, then this just magnifies what I already cannot see. Yep. Whereas this gives me a little edge with some heat signature. Another thing too about wearing some nods, like say winter time and our, our situation happens in the winter, then when the temperatures are cooler, this enables me to move at night when the temperatures drop and I'm warmer because of the mm -hmm. fact that I'm moving. And then when the sun comes up and it's warm, I can stop and lay up during the day and, and mitigate and negate some of that need for fire and shelter and yeah. all of that. Yeah. And you know, and there's pros and cons to both. Like Alan said, I mean, if somebody is extremely camouflaged and standing still, um, they're almost invisible with night vision still mm -hmm. late at night. You know, if you're, if you're in the edge of a tree line, and I'm out in the open, it, it's, it's difficult to see. Right. Also, if there is very little light without an IR emitter, it's hard to see a far distance also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are limitations to, uh, to a night vision as well. You know, where the, the pros of thermal come in is if there's a lot of fog coming in, mm -hmm. thermals or, or night vision is also pretty much useless. You, you can't see hardly anything. Thermal will cut straight through it. Um, I've gone on tons of hog hunts where, you know, I'm panning fields and tree lines with night vision and you don't see a single thing. Mm -hmm. and then pull up a thermal and it's like, oh, there's like <laughs> seven, eight hogs sitting right. right there. So, you know, there's huge advantages to thermal, but there's also some disadvantages mm -hmm. with regards to urban use. Right. You know, uh, thermals will not really penetrate through glass. Right. Um, so if, you know, if Alan was in a second store of a story of a house looking through a glass window, you know, I'm not going to be able to pan up and see for the most part, I'm not going to be able to pan up and see a human silhouette in the window like I would with night vision. I mean, Alan would stand with the one up. caveat, unless they're yep. physically touching the glass, right. then you will see right. some type of a heat signature, a hand or whatever shoulder imprint. Now, now before you get dumb, if you think you're going to like carry a pane of glass across <laughs> a field and nobody's going to see you with a thermal, you still see a perfect square mm -hmm. of the glass. So yeah. don't, don't think that, you know, if you carry a big, huge pane of glass with your bug out bag, nobody's ever going to be able to see you, right. you know, with a thermal. Um, but, you know, we just want to talk about some of the, the basics. Is there anything you want to add to well, it? That pretty much covers it. I mean, I think, I think get it, like you said, start here, go yeah. to there, secondly. But, you know, don't spend your money on this if you don't have food. You know, yeah. keep things in priority. Yeah. You know, I hear people talk about things like nods and precious metals, and I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe. But have, do you have water? You got your water situation figured out? Because you're putting the cart before the horse, you know. And, yes, they are expensive, but... A lot of Americans could find it in the budget. You know, there's I, stuff we blow money on that we could save our pennies and get one. Most guys, most guys have one of these sitting in their gun safe. Right. Most guys mm -hmm. have one of these sitting in their gun they safe. They could downsize. You just need to downsize. Yep. If you have like 13 ARs in your gun safe, mm -hmm. sell a couple and get a PVS-14. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, people tell me all the time, like, I don't have money for night vision. And they're like, oh, I just got a new rifle. Like, mm -hmm. another one? Another yeah. one. Like. What was wrong with the other five that we shot mm -hmm. the other day? You know, so I mean, it's all about be, you know figuring out what the priority priority is. Um, I, I love the fear, the FLIR breach. Um, I've used this thing quite a bit the last couple of months. It is a new model, uh, extremely lightweight, extremely versatile. Um, it does some cool things. You know, it has a, a built-in digital compass in it. So mm -hmm. if Alan and I were out together. You know, I could say somebody is exactly at, you know, 214 degrees. I'm not ballparking. You know, he can hit them and see it exactly the same thing I'm seeing. So that's that's really cool. Um, but, you know, tried and true night vision is a must if, if you're planning on really being serious about getting things done at night, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's just kind of a quick look at 
what Alan and I have in our bag. And I know what guys are going to say also. We're, we're stopping like all trolls right now. Like, what about an EMP? Oh, an EMP goes off, all this stuff's going to be fried anyways. You know, that's why I keep these in Faraday bags, you know, in my, in my uh, bug out bag. You know, this sits in a Faraday bag. Um, so I keep all my electronics like this in a Faraday bag just for extra protection. Um, so, you know, that kind of, that's all I can do. That's, yep. that's everything I can do. That's a good so, practice. Um, you know, so that's just some of the things. If you got any other questions or comments with regards to night vision or thermal. Unless you're a troll, in which case. Yeah, there you go. Uh, feel free to leave them below. And until next time, be safe.